So today we are working on the finishing touches of the K-Swap Sephiro build, my, my version of the ultimate street drift car, a car that is comfortable to drive on the street, nice to drive on the street, has all the creature comforts, but drifts well and is stylish and fun to drive and all those things. But a car that's not just some dedicated drift car, gutted and caged and yada yada. So we've got this thing pretty well wrapped up, but we got a few odds and ends to take care of to uh, get her really ready for the street and the track, which I spent a lot of time on this car and I am ready to enjoy it. I'm a little nervous as you always are with a build like this. Is it really ready? Did I forget something important? But I mean, she's about there. She is very, very close to being finished. Obviously it's kind of V1, the original plan. I'm sure we'll make changes. I'm sure we'll do other things. I'm sure that a build is never finished, but as far as what we set out to do, we're about at the end of it. Aside from pulling the wiring harness back out and looming it. But yeah, so a few projects to do. I want to get into them. I think the most important project, so the one I want to tackle first and foremost, is getting our ECU and engine fuse box mounted. So we're going to have to build a pretty elaborate setup to mount this because the really the only place for it is going to be here in the passenger footwell but i don't want people stepping on it. i don't want to have to tell anyone who gets in here oh watch your feet don't step on the ecu so we're going to try to build a nice setup for that to keep it protected but make it easy to access so that's the plan let's kind of get things in position we still got to do these wires as well these are going to be inputs to the ecu for things like cruise control and you know maybe anti-lag or rotary idle i haven't decided exactly what i'm going to use these these inputs for yet so for now we'll talk them up out of the way main focus getting the ecu mounted so it's not flopping around in here like a dead fish or a live fish i guess all right, before we get too deep into today's product, I wanted to talk to you about today's video sponsor, Keeps. Keeps has become a long-term sponsor of the channel and they are hair loss prevention specialists. You can do everything from home, from the doctor reviewing your information to getting your treatments every three months. It makes it effortless. I hate having to go out, go to a doctor, go here, schedule an appointment. It's so much easier than that. You can do it all from home. And surprisingly, two out of three males will experience some form of male pattern baldness. Once you hear that, look around next time at your, you know, 25 plus year old friends or people you see. You'll see what I mean. It's a lot more common than I even thought it was. It kind of blew my mind after realizing it. And the most important thing to remember is that prevention is key. If you wait till the problem is already a huge problem, it's gonna be a lot harder to fix than if you nip it in the bud and start treating the problem before it becomes a serious problem. It's easy to do. You always want to put things off until you're like, I can't deal with this anymore. This is one of those things. You should act as soon as you can. So if you're interested in taking action before it becomes a bigger problem that's a lot more difficult to deal with, uh, check the link down in the description. Go to keeps.com forward slash Taylor Ray with two R's. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com forward slash Taylor Ray. And you can get 50% off your first order. So huge thank you to Keeps for sponsoring this video. We've got a big project coming up. Video sponsors are going to be crucial in making it all happen the best way it can. So that being said, it's time to get to work. All right, well, I got the ECU in position, which is going to be right back here, just to make sure I was still happy with that uh, mounting location, which I am. I think that's the best place for it. The hard, if we didn't have all the HVAC stuff and this was more of a race car, we could just put it on the trans tunnel, put it up in here somewhere, but it's uh, pretty packed. It's pretty packed in here. So, got the fuse box mounted right here. Nice, good, easy to access spot for it, but kind of tucked out of the way. We'll have to trim this uh, trim piece there. Uh, but anyway, like I said, I just wanted to make sure I was good with that location. So we just need to pull it out. I want to build a plate to mount it to and then build a cover plate for it as like a kick panel so I don't have to worry about people's feet down here kicking the ECU or the wiring or anything like that. That's always scary when you got wiring that people, passengers can kick because I'd like to be able to take water ride-alongs in this car. Uh, I mean, at certain events, we might even be able to take, you know, three passengers because it's a sedan. So I just want to make sure the old girl's protected. Thank you. 
All right, step one done. General box construction is complete. Now, my game plan here, you might be like, this is a little odd. My game plan here, hinge it on the bottom so it can flip open like that, but I'm gonna cut a hole here as well for where the uh, USB cord and stuff goes in. So give me, give myself enough room to come in there, pop that off, plug a USB in. So I wanna figure out about where I wanna mount this and then go ahead and cut our holes. Ah, perfect. I mean, I guess I could have made the finger openings a little smaller. All right, I got some hinges. Um, so that way we can have bolts at the top, unbolt it, flip it down, and get to the ECU and the connectors and everything. I'm not going to attach these just yet um, because we do have some drilling and tapping and stuff to do on this plate. Some of y'all lose your mind when I impact bolts in. What about threading with a drill? Oh no, it worked. I'm gonna have to trim these bolts down a little bit. So, as you can see, bolts are a little long. I thought about putting rubber under this, but the bolt is gonna transfer the vibration anyway, and I'm gonna isolate this to the chassis, and there's sound deadening below it as well. Um, so I think that'll suffice. I don't think I'm gonna worry about putting rubber under here. I normally just hard mount my ECUs, so, but this car does produce a good bit of vibration, which is why the thought was there. Um, so, this hole, we're gonna have this bolt going through, we're gonna have a nut holding it down. We'll drill a hole in the top of the lid here. So we can unbolt it, flip the lid up, do our thing, flip it down, thread the nut back on. Obviously I wanna get a wing nut for it, but for now we got normal nuts. So I gotta figure out where I wanna drill my actual mounting holes to mount this. There's a lot of holes to mount this to the car. <laughs> then we can do this, then we can do the rest. I knew this was gonna be one of those Simple projects that takes quite a while. You think just an ECU mount, half day, takes a full day. Before you guys tell me, oh, if you put a nut on it, it'll make it easier. Well, when you cut it on the bandsaw, you don't have to worry about that because <laughs> you can cut right between the two threads. That's no massaging at all. All right, got this thing completed. I did screw up a little bit, right? Before I cut this slot, I had the bolt out and I put it back in essentially backwards. I needed to put it in this way, not this way. And the reason is because I had the ECU offset one direction. I had it offset flipped around this way to keep the connectors really deep inside here. And that's how I cut this hole out to get this cover off. 
So I can still get the cover off. It's just not centered in the hole. Yeah, not my finest work. I kind of started to rush through this and I changed the game plan a few times. I wasn't originally gonna do this wing nut hinge style. It's just something I thought of as I was making it. But I mean, it's gonna be hidden under carpet. It gets the job done. This thing's completely protected, but we can still oh, get in here and get to our USB and stuff. Now we just need to drill some holes and throw some rib nuts in. But the route these wires better once we have the this officially mounted. They're kind of all in the way at the moment. All right, so I actually put the rib nut in from this side, from the lower side, because there's so much sound deadening and insulation in there. I wouldn't be able to essentially get it all the way through. It'd be sitting on the sound deadening. All right, bracket is finally bolted up. It was a bit of a struggle. Just going through all that insulation made it difficult. But we got it. No worries. Plug it in. Plug our vacuum hose in. Bada boom, done. All right, we are officially done. Now people can't freaking mess up my stuff with their feet. They'd have to really try to mess that up. But yeah, anyway, I'm really glad to have that done. Been kind of dreading it. I just knew doing rib nuts through the, uh, all the sound deadening was gonna be a little annoying. But putting them in from the backside worked out perfect. We were able to get past the frame route. We're good, we're good, moral of the story. So we have two more things to make. Then we're gonna register this thing and drive it some more. So we'll knock out the easy one, just so it's done, in case the uh, harder one takes a bunch of time. <laughs> like that did, that took entirely too much time. I was hoping that would be like a two hour project. All right, so the next thing we need to do is build just a little trough to uh, hold these coolant hoses for our turbo, our vacuum line for our blow off valve, and our little bit of wiring loom here. Um, right now I have them zip tied up to the fuel rail fitting just so that they don't fall down into the serpentine belt because that would be no bueno. So we're just going to build a super simple little bracket to go here and just hold them in place. It's just going to be a handful of bins. All right, cut lines, bend lines. We need to do some compound bends. What I mean by that is we need to bend this now back up, but if we try to set it in here, we're just gonna flatten it out. So if I put this piece of angle here, then that'll allow us to bend it up, but the angle sits too far down in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little V-mount die, essentially, to allow us to do multi-directional bends like this. We're gonna shorten this up a little bit and basically build legs to, uh, Shift it up some. Distractions. Uh, this is something I've been meaning to do for a while and I put it off because I'm like, I got so much to do, I'll just get by with what I got. No, we need to do this. This will make life easier.
Ha ha! I'm pretty hyped on that. So many things I've tried to build that I couldn't do because I couldn't do a bend and then a bend back. We can now. Simple enough to build it too. Got a little angle in that. All right, I trimmed it a little bit. Got it cleaned up a little bit. Just kind of ground on it a little bit. <laughs> that was a lot of little bits, apparently. Perfect, look at that. Simple, easy, simple little bracket. Hardest part was making the tool. <laughs> That's solid, I'm happy with that. So, I said it would be an easy one, I, I, I meant it. Not, not very complicated. Okay, the last little fab project we need to do is gonna be underneath. So we gotta lift this thing up. I'm gonna put this tool back before we do that. <laughs> So the next task is making a cover plate for our transmission bell housing here. So as you can see, it's completely open along the bottom because we have now have a rear wheel drive pan that is very shallow on this end because it's deep on this end. I'm leaving this whole area exposed. You just, you don't want stuff flying up in here. If a rock got in here and got through one of these holes, it, it would wreak havoc. It could and would wreak havoc. So we want to cover this up. We want to make sure this is protected, especially because this is a street car. We're going to be driving down the street driving through rocks and dirt and dust and things like that. We want to protect. So I'm not just going to build a one dimensional plate. I'm going to build it two dimensional and have it basically angle this way to cover up this area as well. So this is covered up as best it can be. So it's definitely going to be a pretty elaborate shape. So we're probably going to want to start with some CAD. Cardboard aided design, if you don't know the joke. CAD is also modeling stuff. Dad jokes. All right, let's, uh, let's whip out the CAD cardboard. Let's just cardboard. All right, here's our completed template. These bend this way. The tape's about to fall off of this one. But yeah, I made them as separate pieces just because it was easier to get these cut to shape. So we just need to transfer this to aluminum, which I cut off an extra piece. You know what, cutting this with the jigsaw is always awful. And you don't really get that straight of an edge anyway. And we've got the belt grinder to clean up edges. So I'm gonna try to cut this with the plasma cutter. I usually only use the plasma cutter for stuff I can't cut with anything else, but let's try it. Well, I also picked a terrible day to wear shorts.
my battery's about to die. Hopefully you see this if it fits. Good. First try. Oh, it's so close. Oh, I just gotta grind this little edge down and it's perfect. Oh, it might be a little long. I don't know, we'll see. I gotta grind this little edge down real quick. All right, we do have to trim about a quarter inch off at the most. Should be the, the final. Yeah, look at that, dude. Perfect. Freaking perfect. That is so satisfying. So we can use some M6 transfer punches for these two holes. Um, and this one. But that looks like M8. Oh man, I love transfer punches. Oh no. That was like the easiest use of a transfer punch. Normally if I'm using one, it's some, something in a very awkward position. So I'll go to tap it and then it'll move and then I'll double tap it. We might not even need another bolt, honestly. I mean, I'll have to see if it rattles, but uh, it might. I think two bolts is honestly perfect. Man, this thing came out so good. I'm super happy with that. Check it out. Man, that thing came out pretty good. I guess this is a little, angle's not perfect on that. We're pretty close over here. Overall, man, this thing came out really good. It's super tight in there which I wasn't sure if I'd need to have a piece going forward there, but I mean, it's about as tight as we can get it. I am super happy with that. One piece, no welding, holes lined up perfect because we use transfer punches, which you thread in, tap it with a hammer, it leaves a little punch hole. Overall, A1, really happy with that. Now, I'll see if it rattles or if we have any issues. Um, I think I was gonna try to use one of these threaded holes that was already here, but just to make myself happy, <laughs> do two symmetrical holes, I can just drill and tap the adapter plate uh, for two M6 holes instead of using an M8 one. Uh, but we'll see. So anyway, at least that's fully protected now. Don't gotta worry about rocks getting up in our uh, bell housing situation. So, sweet. All right, well, that was kind of the last thing on my agenda for right now. Um, tomorrow, I plan to go register the car, get a plate on it so we can actually really drive it. I've also got a couple small projects to do. I need to change the wideband sensor so we can actually get on it. I got my catch can stuff in. So I got my Motion Raceworks breathers. These are really cool because they've got a, basically a double baffle, which is why I'm using this instead of a weld on AN fitting because I won't be able to baffle that AN fitting like this is. So these are super cool. I, I didn't even think of it. It was actually a viewer suggestion. I get so stuck on Motion Raceworks being like, you know, American stuff, my V8 cars, but works on uh, freaking imports too. I don't, I'm glad a viewer recommended it. So we got those to do. Power steering fitting should be here so we can put the fitting in, hopefully tidy up the power steering, be done with that. Couple other small things. And I mean, it's it's pretty much done. I mean, I use the term loosely because we do still have to loom the wiring harness and like I've got a different angle kit I wanna try to put on it. Might start on that tomorrow as well, but the, the biggest plan is getting this thing registered, street legal and going and taking it for a proper drive. So I hope to see you guys for that. But for now, we are out of time. The crickets are chirping. The sun is down. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.